Hey everyone, Andre Katz here and welcome back to my channel. Today we will go over the third part of the Fell Cycle puzzle and specifically we're gonna learn how to solve the 8 o'clock torch. If you are new to this then I highly recommend watching my previous videos where I cover the basics and show you how to solve all the previous torches. Completing this mega puzzle is likely the key to unlocking the Incogniter, the indecipherable Fell Cycle mount. So let's not waste any more time, put on your dear stalker hat and let's go! Alright, so we are now currently on the 8 o'clock torch and this one is gonna be lit up by solving a puzzle entirely within the Karazan catacombs. And it involves the mysterious Enigma machine. You'll find it just past the staircase leading to the Fell Cycle room right after the annoying red alarm. <laughs> this machine can become functional now by adding the ancient shaman blood previously obtained from Torch 6 and the Warden's Mirror that we got from Torch 7. Interacting with it will give you two prompts, begin and submit. The Enigma machine is locked behind seven lock mechanisms, but before we can explain how to unlock them, there is two things you need to know. First one is the statues and specifically where they are located within the Karazan catacombs. Oh, and by the way, if you've been inside the catacombs and moved stuff around, it's probably a good idea now to leave the dungeon and reset it before starting, so things can go back to their original place. Alright, so first of all, there are five statues inside the tombs, and let's go and start with the rage statue. This one it can be found just as you enter the catacombs after the first set of stairs. Next, the nature statue can be found inside the room with the ogre symbol on top of the door frame, and keep in mind that you need to unlock this door first by using the key of shadows. Same goes for the next door, which is marked by the big red button. Inside this room you can find the third statue, the Watcher. Moving on, the Guardian statue can be found next on the corridor, just after the alarm, next to the Enigma machine. And finally, the Grid statue can be found inside the room where the Fell Cycle is located, just to the right of the entrance. All of these statues can be dragged around by clicking on them once to attach them to your character and if you click again, you'll be able to release them. As you might have guessed, the statues need to be moved somewhere within the cars and catacombs and that's true. The objective behind each lock is to place the correct number of statues on one of the seven pressure plates, but before we dive into how that works, let's go over where these plates are located. Also keep in mind that the numbering here of the plates is really important. So pressure plate number one is inside the Fell Cycle room to the right of the cryptic plaque. Very nearby plate number two can be found as you come into the Fell Cycle room. Plate three is inside the locked room with the humming crystal above its entrance. To access it, use the previously obtained relic of crystal connections. Target the purple crystal inside the room and activate the relic to teleport in. Once inside, you can exit by approaching the gate and targeting the green crystal above the door frame, which will also safely teleport you out. Keep in mind that statues can pass through the gate if you position them very close to it, they will gain a buff and become translucent, allowing them to cross over. However, like I said, you'll need to manipulate the crystals to go in and out yourself. Plate number 4 is in the corner room before the Fell Cycle room, near the handwritten notes. Next, plate number 5 is located just after the stairs leading to the main portion of the instance, next to a replica owl. Plate number 6 is in the corridor to the left of the gated room with the cats. And finally, plate number 7 is inside the room with the ogre symbol above its entrance. At the moment, the plates appear to be inactive, but once the Enigma machine is turned on, they will begin to glow, indicating that they can now be fiddled with. These plates are activated when you, any statue or even creature step onto them. A beam of light in a specific color will emit from the pressure plate determined by the number of objects placed on it. Blue light means one object, green means two, yellow is three objects, red is four and purple light means five objects. Hold that thought as we'll need to keep returning to this to check if the color aligns with the number of statues that should be on each plate. Alright, we've seen the locations of statues and pressure plates within the tombs, so now we can proceed to start solving this puzzle. The Enigma machine has seven locks that can be unlocked by using the correct combination of statues and plates. You might be wondering, okay, well then how do I know how many statues go to which plate? Well, the answer is you need to count rats. Yep, that's right. 
rats and not the catacombs ones. But let's do this step by step by giving also some examples here so it's easier to understand. Alright, first things first, interact with the Enigma machine and click begin once to start the puzzle. This triggers a chat message reading the dungeon echoes with the sound of mechanisms resetting. After this, click submit once and this will start the puzzle for the first lock and spawn rats throughout the catacombs. What you need to do at this point is head back to the entrance and start searching the dungeon for rats. Count how many rats you find, and this is very important, do not count the catacombs rats, but only the regular ones. Though as you go, make sure to kill any critters you see. The reason we are doing this is because critters can step on plates, interfering with the puzzle and eventually can throw over counts. To enable critters names to be shown, go into interface and search for critters and companions options and tick that. You can also use this helpful macro to help you find alive rats and mark them with a skull icon. I'll have it down in the description so you can easily copy paste it into your game. Once you have a headcount of how many rats are spawned within the catacombs, use this table provided by Wahed to see which pressure plates need to be activated. And let's see some examples to make this easier to understand. For the first log, I'll start with the first column, and since I counted 9 rats, I'll go to this row. That takes us to the cell that says 2 on 2, which means I will put 2 statues on plate number 2. First number is the amount of statues, and the second number indicates which plate needs to be activated. We'll see a few more examples down the line, but let's continue for now. So, like I said before, always check if the light beam is also correct. In my case, I had two objects in a pressure plate and it was green, so that means that all of these statues were positioned correctly. Once you are sure about your choice, go back to the Enigma machine and click Submit. If done correctly, you'll get the magnifying lens signifying that you got a secret and a text you hear a mechanism unlock. And that means that you have successfully unlocked your first lock. At this point, new rats will spawn and you will need to start counting rats again for the second lock. However, before doing so, clear the previous pressure plate of any statues to avoid activating multiple plates at once. Always make sure that only one plate is active at a time. I will also have more tips at the end of the video, so make sure to stick around. Ok, so once the previous plate is clear, begin counting rats again for the second lock. I highly recommend sticking to the same route each time. For example, I choose to start at the entrance stairs and move towards the fell cycle room while checking every single room and spamming the macro. Be careful as well as sometimes there might be more rats on top of each other, so make sure you count them all. That usually happens in the corner on the fountain room, I don't know why, but also rats can spawn inside the closed rooms, so again keep spamming the macro and check every single corner. Before going to the table to figure out the next statue plate combination, double check the dungeon to ensure that you have counted every single rat. In my case, for the second log I counted 5 rats, which means I'll need to place 2 statues on plate 3. By checking the light beam, it was green and yeah, it was correct because it was 2 objects. Then we can go back to the machine and click submit. You will see a second chat message now popping up, which indicates that you have indeed unlocked the second log. And like before, always clear the plate you just placed the statues so that it is clean and then you can proceed with counting rats for the next log. Depending on how many rats you find, you will go to the third column since we are now on the third log and see how many statues you should put and on which plate. One final example, I counted 5 rats on the third log, which means I go to the third column and I see I need to put 3 statues on the number 1 plate. Yellow light means 3 objects on the plate, so that's correct. I have also double checked the rats count, which means I can now safely return to the machine and press submit. And rinse and repeat for the remaining 4 logs. Once you have unlocked all 7 locks, the final submit will also say a great lock has been released. That fully lights up 8 o'clock torch and thus ending our puzzle. You will also now be able to access the vault room behind the fell cycle, which opens up even more clues for our next puzzles. And before I wrap this up, there's also something really important to go over. In the unfortunate event that you make a mistake on any lock, you will get zapped and the puzzle will need to be restarted from lock 1, so you have to be very cautious. There are actually a few ways that someone could mess this up, but I've gathered a few tips which might prevent that from happening. First of all, it's 
very easy to forget the rats count and what log you currently are. I suggest writing them down as you go and you can even record a clip of yourself doing this. I happened to solve this while streaming and sometimes I forgot how many rats I counted, so I was just going back to the stream to double check. Obviously, you don't have to be streaming to do this, you can use the Windows Capture to record yourself and go and count again the rats. The rat corpses disappear after a while, so even corpse counting can be a bit off sometimes. Now, as far as the lock is concerned, if you forget which lock number you are trying to unlock, there are two easy ways to figure it out. Firstly, you can see the chat message to see how many you have unlocked so far. If let's say you see the text three times, it means you have unlocked three locks and you are now trying to unlock the fourth one. Secondly, if for whatever reason you cannot see the chat messages, you can go check on the machine itself. It clearly states how many locks are left and you can work your way backwards. For example, if there are four locks remaining, it means you already did three out of seven and you are currently on the fourth lock. If the engine states there are three locks remaining, it means you already did four and now you are are going on the fifth log and so on. And again, the most important things are that each time that you submit, always make sure to clear the previous pressure plate and then proceed on solving the next one. Rats can also be found inside the closed door, so like I said, spamming work wonders. Write down the number of the lock that you are trying to unlock and how many rats you found, so you don't forget. Or even better, record this as you go to be sure. And one last thing, when you kill the catacomb rats during the first lock, you don't need to worry about them for a while as they aren't gonna respawn for another hour. The Enigma machine only spawns the regular rats, which you need to count. However, if it takes you longer than an hour to unlock all seven locks, the catacomb rats will respawn and you'll have to kill them again to avoid any confusion. And that's all for now, guys. Pretty interesting puzzle, quite easy to mess it up. And that table was very confusing at first glance, but it all becomes clear after understanding what you have to do. This is obviously a lot better than the Warden's puzzle, but it was also quite stressful, cause you don't really want to mess it up and take it from the start again. As long as you are careful though, it should be okay. As always, thank you so much for sticking around and make sure to drop a like if you have found this video helpful. Don't forget to subscribe for more WoW coverage and hit the bell to stay up to date. Good luck with whatever you are doing! And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!